My name is Stephen Beers. I'm Professor of Immunology and Immunotherapy here at the Center for Cancer Immunology at the University of Southampton. The center opened in the spring of 2018 as the UK's first dedicated center for cancer immunology research. The center was designed to bring together interdisciplinary teams to expand clinical trials, explore new areas, and to bring life-saving drugs to cancer patients. Now I'd like to hand over to Dr. Charles Burtz, the Against Breast Cancer funded lecturer in antibody therapeutics here at the center. Hi. I'm Dr. Charles Burtz, a lecturer in antibody therapeutics here at the Centre for Cancer Immunology at the University of Southampton. So over the past 40 years, there's been a significant increase in the survival of breast cancer patients. However, there's still an awful lot of work to do, especially with certain types of breast cancer that are spread to other parts of the body. And these are known as metastatic or secondary breast cancers. One of the most promising and revolutionary areas in developing anti-cancer therapies is immunotherapy. So immunotherapy is a type of therapy that makes use of our own immune cells to target the cancer cells and get rid of them. So under normal conditions, our immune system is there to identify any invading pathogens, so such as bacteria and viruses, and remove them from the body. But the immune system also acts to surveil all our own cells to make sure things don't go wrong. Cancer cells are, of course, cells where things have gone wrong, except the cancer cells have the ability to either hide from or sometimes just switch off the immune system and they can also create an environment that prevents these immune cells from working properly. So immunotherapy is known as a biological treatment so rather than chemotherapy which is a drug which acts to poison those cancer cells immunotherapy is there to switch on our own immune systems to identify those cancer cells again and use our own immune system to remove them. So on this lab tour we're going to theoretically develop a novel antibody based therapy so this is a type of immunotherapy that we can then use to target secondary and metastatic breast tumours. So in order to get started, we first need to form a hypothesis. So this is based on previous work. We then need to get it peer reviewed from experts in the field to make sure that it's valid. We then need to get ethical approval to make sure that it's um, the right thing to do. And then we also need to make sure that our techniques that we're going to plan to use are robust. And once all that is in place, we can then proceed and start our work. So let's get started on this lab tool. So we begin here in the microscope room, looking at the patient samples. So here we have breast cancer samples that are either mounted in paraffin wax, like this one here, or we have samples that are fresh frozen at the time that they're taken from the patient. We can then use these samples to identify specific immune cells or cancer markers within those breast cancer patients that we could then develop a targeted antibody against. So to be able to do that, we first need to slice these wax blocks into incredibly thin slices. And we do that using the machine here, which is called a cryostat. So once we got those incredibly thin slices, we then mount them on these glass slides, which you can see here. We can then use this area of the lab over here to then stain these slices for particular immune cells that we're interested in and also to start to look for particular cancer markers that we could then develop an antibody against. So when we do this, we put different coloured markers on each of those immune cells and each of those markers. And then we can then use a technique called immunofluorescence to identify and actually visualise those cells. And we do that using a fluorescent microscope which you can see here. So you'll now see some images of what these breast cancer samples actually look like, and you'll see some of those immune cells that we can start to identify. So here is a picture of a breast cancer sample. We can now start to add in the colours to identify each of those different cell types. So first of all, this green image identifies the cancer cells themselves. Then we can also identify different types of the immune cells. Firstly, cytotoxic CD8 T cells, and these are in cyan. The T regulatory cells, these are now shown in yellow, and the macrophages are now shown in red. We can then overlay those images all together, and you see this multicolored image showing exactly where all those cells sit within the tumor. If you want to target one of those immune cell populations or cancer cells directly, you can generate an antibody by engineering it to recognize those markers that we are seeing in the patient samples. So I'll give you some time to look at these images and I'll meet you in the PCR room. Antibodies are naturally produced in our body to help us fight diseases and infection. 
and we can utilize this in the lab in much the same way as our bodies do. However, the benefit of doing it in the lab is that we can engineer these antibodies to target the markers that we've identified in the cancer cells that we showed you earlier. So how do we actually go about engineering these antibodies? So my colleague Lewis here will talk you through this first process of this antibody engineering. So we first start with the DNA sequence, which is effectively the instruction booklet on how to assemble an antibody. But we can insert our own instructions into this DNA sequence, which will then direct the antibody to our marker of interest. And once we've done this with one piece of DNA, we then need to amplify this up into millions of pieces of DNA. And we do this using a technique called PCR. And that's done in this room using a special piece of equipment called the PCR machine. And then we can collect all the copies of the instructions and insert them into a specialized cell, which will then act as the factory and read the instructions to then produce a large amount of the antibody that we're after. Thank you, Lewis. OK, so here we are in the tissue culture room. And as you can see, there's various bits of equipment that we use to grow uh, cells in the lab. And Lewis here will now explain how we use some of these. So in this tissue culture suite, we need to make sure the cells are clean and sterile. So we have to do all the work in a tissue culture hood like this. And it produces clean air, which prevents any contamination, which could cause different antibodies to be produced. And to grow antibodies, we have to grow the cells in an incubator like this, where the cells are constantly shaking, which is similar to how they would be in the blood. Alternatively, we can grow the cells in this type of flask, which has a flat bottom, and the cells adhere to this. And in here, we're growing breast cancer cells, which in the future, we can test the antibodies on. So as you can see, these cells are growing in this pinkish media. So this contains all the nutrients that those cells need to grow. So let's have a look and see what they look like down the microscope. So here you can see the breast cancer cells actually growing in the flask that we showed you. You can see them actively dividing and growing. We'll come back later to see how we actually use these breast cancer cells in the immune cell to test how well our new antibodies work. But now, back to how we make the antibodies. So once our cells have made the antibody, they release them into the growth media that's surrounding them. So we then need to purify those antibodies out of that growth media. So the first step of that is to remove the cells that we no longer need. So we can do that using a machine called a centrifuge. So here I have a tube of cells that have produced an antibody, and then we then put it into a centrifuge that spins it at a very high speed. And what this means is we then get a cell pellet right at the bottom of the tube, and we can just pour off the media that's now containing our antibody. So once we have this media containing our antibody, we now need to purify that antibody out of that media and discard all the other molecules and proteins that may be in there contaminating our, our stock. So to do that, we use a machine called an HBRC, which you can see over in the corner here. And as you can see, it's got a very tall column. This column will specifically bind to our antibody. So as we run our media through the column, our antibody binds and all the other contaminants will be washed out the other end of the tube. We can then remove our antibody from that HBLC column, and that is where we then have to do some quality control to make sure that, firstly, we've got the antibody that we think we've got, and also to make sure that it binds the targets that we've identified. So to do that, we use a piece of machinery called a biocore, and Hannah will now talk you through how this works. The biocore works by sticking a marker on the surface of a gold-plated chip. We then flow our antibody over the surface of the chip to see whether or not it will bind. As it binds, it will change how much light is reflected off the surface of the chip, which is indicated by this line here. The biocore not only tells us whether or not it will bind to our target, but also tells us how strongly it binds. This is important as we want an antibody that binds strongly so we can use less of it in therapy. This is important as it will reduce the cost of the therapy, making it more accessible to people around the world and will also reduce side effects. So once we have our purified antibodies and shown that they can specifically target the market that we're interested in, we then need to test how well it can actually direct the immune cells to then remove the cancer cells. So we have several different experimental systems in which we can do this. One of them is called a phagocytosis assay. So phagocytosis literally means cell eating. So this is where a specialist immune cell known as a macrophage will come along 
and engulf the cancer cell, removing it from the system where it can then kill it by breaking it down into its harmless component parts. So this is where we use the antibody that we've made to label the cancer cells that we showed you growing earlier, and this tags them for removal. So when a macrophage comes across a cancer cell that has been marked with our antibody, it knows that this cell is bad, and so it can eat it and remove and kill it. So in this video, you have the macrophage cell in the middle, and it's surrounded by these blue cells. And these blue cells are the breast cancer cells that we've labelled with a blue dye. These cancer cells have also been labelled with an antibody that marks it for removal. And when these labelled cancer cells encounter that macrophage, you can see that macrophage engulfing them and getting rid of them. And this particular macrophage in this video is removing three or four of these breast cancer cells. So this video has been sped up and represents about an hour in real time. So I'll leave you to watch this and I'll meet you in the fact room with my colleague Hannah. So for us to accurately quantify the amount of phagocytosis that our antibody can actually direct and to make sure that it can bring about more phagocytosis than what's currently available in therapy, we then carry out this phagocytosis assay and we can do this using this piece of machinery called a flow cytometer. So my colleague Hannah here will now talk through how we actually use it. In this experiment, we add different coloured labels to our cells. For example, we can use a blue label for our macrophages and a green label for our breast cancer cells. We allow the, our antibody to coat our breast cancer cells, which we then incubate with macrophages for several hours. We can then put them into these tubes, which we then run on the flow cytometer which will run them at 100 vents per second. Each dot represents a cell. For example, in this corner, we have our macrophages labelled in blue, and in this corner, we have our breast cancer cells labelled in green. In the top corner here, we have cells that have been phagocytosed by our macrophages. Using this system, we can also measure other ways that these antibodies can direct immune cells to kill cancer cells. Okay, thank you, Hannah. So once we've decided that our antibody shows promise, we then need to publish this work so that we can share it with experts within the field. After that, we can then take it further into clinical trials and we'll now make our way over to see Elise, who is a senior clinical trials manager here at the University of Southampton. Hi, Elise. Um, so you are a senior clinical trials manager at the clinical trials unit here at the University of Southampton. So thank you very much for coming along and spending some time to talk us through the process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so the next stage, once you've got, got your antibody that you, you think is going to work, we need to try it out in patients. And that would be in a clinical trial. So um, we need to do clinical trials to find out if it's safe to give the, the antibody, to find out um, if it has any side effects to find out if it does what you think it does when you test it in the lab. Um, and we also need to, we'd also look at how it affects the patient's quality of life taking this kind of drug. Um, so not all patients are able to take part in a clinical trial. Um, we have quite, we have inclusion criteria that patients must meet um, to receive the drug. And that's for a number of reasons. One being so that we have the same similar group of patients, so similar type of cancer, similar age group, but also we need to make sure that these patients are actually suitable to receive the drug. So um, once we have the patients um, and they're recruited by the doctor or nurse at their hospital into the trial, um, to compare it with the standard treatment that's currently given for their breast cancer, we'd likely randomise the patients. So you'd have one group of patients that receive the antibody and then you'd have another group of patients that receive the standard of care for, for their breast cancer. Um, and in that way, that reduces any bias within these groups. So all the results you see would be from um, the effect of the antibody alone. Um, so patients, a length of a trial varies depending on, um, on the trial, but typically patients would come in to hospital every couple of weeks to receive the drug. It, they need to have some tests before they have the drug just to make sure that um, they're, so they're okay to receive it. So we'll be doing a, some blood tests, review of side effects, um, and maybe a physical exam, things like that. Then have the, the drug. Then throughout the trial, at different points, patients may have to come in to have um, a scan to see how well, how their body is responding, how their breast cancer is responding to the treatment. Um, and then some trials, we also um, ask patients to consent to provide some additional blood samples and a sample of their tumour 
biopsy that they've had done. And then they'd get sent to, to a lab like this. Um, and then we can then look at how, um, how the body is responding to the treatment, exactly what's going on. We might look to see if there's certain characteristics within a tumour or within a patient that means they respond um, better or worse. And then we've also then got their tumour sample that we can explore and look at more reasons behind why the breast cancer may occur. Um, we could then use it to develop future drugs um, just for the work you're doing here. Um, so once a patient's finished taking part in a trial, it's finished taking the treatment, uh, we would then follow them up for, a, for a longer and to see if there's any long-term side effects and also um, to see the long-term effects that the antibody may have had on the tumour to just see if that response remains. Um, once we analyse the results and we get the, we get the results from all the patients and we know whether it works or not, we submit that to the MHRA and they will make the decision as to whether we can um, provide the drugs to all, whether it's safe to give the drug and whether it works. Once we get that approval, that's really, that's really what we're aiming for and it, it's great when we get that because that means that we can then go out and give it to all the patients with breast cancer that, that really need it. Okay, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak through that process with us. Thank you, Elise. So research is expensive, but very vital. And collectively, we've made significant improvements in breast cancer survival. However, there's still a lot of hard work to be done. As I said, research is expensive and without your support, we wouldn't be able to achieve any of it. So from all of us, thank, thank you. you. We hope you have enjoyed this virtual lab tour. To find out more about the research we fund and how you can support us, go to againstbreastcancer.org.uk and to find out more about the Centre for Cancer Immunology, go to southampton.ac.uk.